Good evening. You're listening to WBTN Community Radio, and it's time now for a special edition of News and Views. Coming to you live this evening from Cat TV's fabulous Chester J. Hickok studio here on Main Street in beautiful downtown Bennington, Vermont. This evening we have assembled for you most of the candidates for Bennington Select Board. By phone we are joined by Mike Bethel, to my right Peter Brady and Justin Corcoran, to my left Rachel Fields and Michael Keane. The format of tonight's candidate forum is pretty straightforward. We have six questions for our candidates. Each candidate will have two minutes to provide a response. And when we're finished with the questions, each candidate will be given two minutes to make a closing statement. In the spirit of full disclosure and transparency, we want to let you know that one of the candidates is a member of the WBTN board. And for that reason, Instead of us coming up with the questions for tonight's forum, we have solicited questions from area media. Our first question tonight is from Keith Whitcomb with the Bennington Banner, and we will begin with Mike Bethel. Mr. Bethel, are you there? I'm there. Great. Okay. This is the first question. It's, it's actually kind of three questions in one, so listen up. You'll have two minutes. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? Where have you worked and have you had experience serving in government before? Mr. Bethel? Uh, my name is Bethel. I've been in the last 15 years. <coughs> I lived here as 10 years and years ago. Uh, an artist in trade. And no, I did not serve in, Benny, in, in government in Bennington or anywhere else. Uh, I think that's Okay, anything else? No, that's... Okay, thank you. Mr. Brady? Um, I grew up here in town, attended local schools, uh, got a degree from the community college on uh, Main Street, uh, raised a family here in Bennington. Um, I've worked in several places around town, many of the factories back when they were here. Um, I've managed several businesses um, and uh, worked at a law firm around here. Um, I served in the House of Representatives. I served as Justice of the Peace on the Board of Civil Authority. Um, I served as the BSD moderator and the uh, MAU moderator. Um, that's about it. Okay, Mr. Corcoran. Thanks, yes. Uh, I'm from Bennington. I've lived here my entire life. Uh, I also graduated from CCV in Bennington. I have a degree in business. Uh, I currently work for Bennington Subaru. Uh, I served five years on the Career Development Center board, um, three years as chairman of the marketing committee for that for that uh, institution. Uh, I've also served the last three years on the Bennington Select Board. Okay, thank you, Ms. Fields. Um, so I grew up here in Bennington. I I wasn't born here, but I moved here when I was in elementary school. Um, I have for employment when I was I think I was like 19. I started off at. Um, uh, an AmeriCorps program, which was ma mainly a gang awareness and uh, prevention program, and it was cited right at United Counseling Services. Um, and now I work as a nurse's assistant at the Vermont Veterans Home. I've been there for nine years. Um, so I work for the state of Vermont. Um, I haven't served in any government position um, other than my employment. And um, I do serve on a nonprofit, um, the Vermont State Employees Association Board of Trustees. Okay, thank you. Mr. Keene? Well, I'm the lonely end here. I'm the one who hasn't grown up in Bennington. I'm uh, an Irish Catholic immigrant son from Brooklyn, New York. I have lived and worked is in probably six, in six states and four foreign countries. Uh, have I worked with governments? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I've worked with the government of the Kingdom of Norway a long time ago and worked with the government of the province of Quebec. In Bennington, in Vermont, I've been serving on the Vermont Economic Progress Council since 2011, I believe, 2011, and I'm also serving on the board of listers. And I'm on the board of a number of not-profits <coughs> in the area, 
like the uh, Second Chance Animal Center, the American Lung Association of Vermont, and I am the person who is on the WBTN board. Okay, thank you. Our next question comes from Liz Schaefer with the Penny Saver. Peter Brady will take this question first. What plans do you have for youth activities? Well, what I'd like to do is um, the United States Army has proposed trading the armory for the jar control property, which is contaminated over on Bowen Road. I'd like the town to get behind that idea and do that. What I'd like to do is turn that into a, a youth center. Um, it has a, uh, a full basketball court. There's a, uh, a stage. There's balcony seating. There's uh, bleacher seating. Downstairs, there's a bowling alley, a shooting range. Um, I think it'd be possible to put in a, 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 a couple pool tables and, and uh, dart boards and have leagues in there, have a basketball league for the kids. Um, and when I was young, they did a lot of uh, dances there. On Friday nights, that's where all the kids in town were. <coughs> I think it would give them, we could do it in conjunction with um, the rec center. Um, if you buy a membership to the rec center, it also includes the, uh, the youth center. Uh, I th I'd like to get the YMCA involved in it. And just give the kids in this town, we, we all know about the drug epidemic that's going around, and it would give them something positive to do, maybe some uh, uh, craft shows in, in, in different, you know, leagues, uh, pool leagues. We had those in the rec center when I was young. Uh, it kept the kids off the street and always gave them something positive to do. Okay, thank you. Mr. Corker? Uh, Peter mentioned the YMCA getting involved with the rec center, and at one point in time, uh, there was a group who was looking into potentially trying to facilitate that, um, which could really be uh, a good idea. <coughs> um, you know, financially, the town's, we're pretty strapped right now. We don't have a lot of options, uh, you know, as far as funding to expedite more things into into youth programming. Um, you know, there's, it's, we're, it's tough because we don't have the ability to fund things like we need to. You know, our rec center it has had been in disrepair. We've got that facility back up to par as far as structure, um, but we don't have the funds to, to offer some of the programs that we really might like to offer uh, right now. Unfortunately, um, a lot of the options right now are in private, uh, you know, private business. There's a lot like the sports center that's opened up on School Street. There's, you know, the soccer facility for the kids um, and adults as well, but kids are using it also. Um, and there's a lot of youth groups for sports. Um, kids being involved in youth groups and sports, you know, is a, is a big way to try and cut down on some of the drug problems that we alluded to also. So as far as a magic answer for youth programming, uh, the current economic stat, you know, status we're in in Bennington, I don't think we have one. But it's something we always need to be keeping our eye open to and taking suggestions from the community as it comes along. Okay, thank you. Ms. Fields? Um, I really believe that we need to um, invest in our youth. I don't, I agree um, with Justin. I don't think that the town can afford to open up a public youth center, um, but I think we can expand on what we have. I think that we could certainly use a nonprofit organization to come to town that would um, offer um, a place for kids to go that's safe, that they could hang out and um, do all sorts of activities and spend time together. I also think that. Um, I would like to see some sort of youth concerts going on in the summertime. I think you know that's a huge thing to encourage any type of um, creativity that um, our youth have. We need to get them out, you know, if they're musicians, out on the stage singing for their friends, and kids really enjoy that. Um, teenagers really enjoy that. Um, I also believe that we need to invest a little more in the local recreation center. I think that we could get, you know, volunteer um, more volunteer programs more grant monies to do you know specialized arts and craft programs through there and i know that a lot of the local businesses as well offer um you know programs for our youth i think we should just encourage that and work together to strengthen it and grow it okay thank you mr keen i think that uh, all these are uh, absolutely great ideas and i would add to them that uh, we have three different four different colleges in town I'd like to see us using those colleges more as places where our youth, teenagers and younger and older teenagers, can learn more, can work on internships, can do volunteer work. I think Bennington and Bennington County 
probably have the largest number of not-for-profit and volunteer organizations in maybe the state. And I'd like to see a lot of our youth to be encouraged and rewarded for taking part in them, working with adults, working with other teenagers from various levels of our society, and getting a feel for what it's like to do things on a not-for-profit basis, also getting a feel for what it's like to be in an organization where they would work in an internship, for example. And ideally, we could find ways to, to pay those internships. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bethel? Yeah, I uh, kind of agree with Brady and Justin Corcoran. Um, I think that's the way to go with expanding the Rec Center a little bit. We have the money to do it in the uh, armory. Good idea. Again, if we have the money to do it. Uh, I'm afraid in the next few years, our grand list is going to dip. We're not going to have the extra money to help the youth or the seniors or anybody in the community. So I hope that, uh, some of the questions come through is what we're going to do with our economy. But the youth are very important. We have a drug problem, and the uh, state has a drug problem. The country has a drug problem. But you've got to get the kids early enough. In a youth center would be great for Bennington. They tried it years ago. We should try it again. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Our third question is from Patrick McArdle <coughs> with the Rutland Herald. Mr. Corcoran will be the first one to answer. Town staff and the select board have talked about developing, rehabilitating North Side Drive, the town's busiest road. What are your thoughts about the project and what would you like to see done there? Yeah, that's uh, an absolutely imperative project to our success in Bennington. The very vast bulk of our tax dollars comes from our commercial district on Northside Drive and North Bennington Road. Northside Drive also happens to be, if you travel up and down it, which I'm sure many of you do, uh, one of the worst roads as far as condition-wise in Bennington and probably in the county. Um, repairing that road, it is a state highway, so we need to get the state behind it, but it's, uh, it's going to be extremely important to our success as far as being able to grow our ground list, grand list and attract businesses to Bennington. Um, there's a plan in place already. It's been a concept, conceptual design for some point in time. Um, it will place roundabouts at approximately four different locations across Northside Drive, make one-way traffic. Um, if anybody ever tries to make a left out on a Northside Drive anyway, it's essentially already one-way traffic, so it wouldn't change your <laughs> traffic patterns too much, but it would probably make it a little easier to, uh, to navigate. Um, that being said, you know, there's been an initiative to already start working with the legislature to try and get the funds to, to be able to facilitate that project. It's going to be a multi-million dollar project and we need the state to be behind it uh, to fix what is essentially their road. Um, once that road's fixed, uh, Bennington could potentially look to take that over and maintain it from there on out. Uh, but we're going to absolutely need to be able to have some support from the state to do that. The select board has uh, signed a letter of, of approval and recommendation and sent it off to some key members in the legislature, our delegation, transportation committee so on and so forth. Um, but this, this select board that's currently sitting and the one that's going to sit here, here in, uh, after March uh, needs to absolutely be behind that. It's, it's extremely important to Bennington. It's extremely important to our future, and it's something that has to be done. Okay, thank you. Ms. Fields? So when I first heard about um, the, the plan for Northside Drive with the roundabouts, um, I was kind of taken back. Um, I think roundabouts are kind of, they seem intimidating, and a lot of people that I spoke with had said no roundabouts. Um, but then I talked to somebody who is a highway safety expert, and um, I was informed that it, it's a safety, it, it's a much safer intersection for people they're slowing down and coming to it. So I'm absolutely behind it. I think that it definitely is the state road and, and we need, the select board needs to push the, um, our state legislators to um, fight for that for our town. And, um, you know, I think that, I think that they will. I think it's just a matter of sticking with it and, and um, keep pushing. Okay, thank you. Mr. Keene? Public safety, I think, is, is part of the greatest, the greatest component of that improvement. And I, I agree with the, uh, the rest of the panelists that roundabouts are the thing. I've seen roundabouts work in other countries very well. The very first time you go through one, it's a little strange. But you see that the, they work, they control traffic well. I guess what I would add is we'd want to make sure that we have good pedestrian access for the same area and good bicycle access. Uh, I think a lot of people in this area like to bicycle, they like to be out and walk. Improving that whole traffic area will include both the bicycle paths and pedestrian walkways. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bethel? Yeah, I'm all for expanding uh, access to North 
website drive. I'm the one at Walmart with the bill of the wall forward. Uh, they are going to have to put a route on a wall. And then BCR has come up with an idea of putting more routes in uh, to make it safer and easier to travel. That's debatable, but wait and see how it goes. I'd also like to see Johnson Control property change. Uh, that's part of that aisle of commercial uh, stores to be up there. We we could we could raise revenue on Johnson Control to about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year if we had a plaza. Yeah, it's been vacant for twenty years. It needs to be changed. The other thing I'd like to see done on I Drive is the select board to acknowledge. Commercial sector on Northside Drive in downtown pays for the majority of the taxes downtown, and we've ignored it too long. We put too much into this industry, and you're going to hear tomorrow in the paper probably that uh, Lasat just left. You're going to leave in May, losing about 140 jobs. Uh, we need to capitalize a commercial part of our. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brady. Well, as far as the roundabouts, I would say first of all. Look, kids, Big Ben, Parliament. <laughs> um, I think the one, the first one you're going to see done in Bennington is going to be done by uh, private business when Walmart does their expansion. Um, as far as the Johnson Controls property, I've advocated for years that we should change that to a commercial property. Again, to uh, reiterate, with Plasson closing in May, we're losing 143 jobs. Um, that's going to be about $6.5 million from the, the local payroll in this local economy. Um, we've got to make it up somewhere. Um, on the bright side, uh, Kmon uh, Composites is looking to expand. So, But getting back to Northside Drive, if we could get a few, just get one anchor store in there in in you would see other stores come in and buy up the dilapidated properties and the road would you get a lot of private money included in fixing the road itself uh, as you'll see with uh, Walmart fixing the, the roundabout that they're putting in so I think we just need a diversified base um, Northside Drive could be a great retail section where we can attract uh, shoppers from other areas we had the local option tax that's been talked about in the legislature. Um, under current law, that would bring in an extra million dollars per year to Bennington. Uh, if you get a few more retailers coming in here and you pull in people from other areas to shop here for the day, you're talking a couple million more dollars per year for the town to work with. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Our next question is from Liz Schaefer with the Penny Saver. Ms. Fields will be the first one to answer. What plans do you have for more business in the downtown area? Well, I think that, um, you know, part of building, attracting businesses and, and building the town is making, you know, the infrastructure, making the bike paths, making um, a walkable downtown so people are attracted to it and they want to come um, they want to come to Bennington to live. Young professionals want to come and live in Bennington. And there's a lot of people out there with a lot of, you know, artisan skills and crafts that have ideas for businesses. There's a lot of opportunities out there um, for growth, um, for grant monies and, and things like that. <coughs> I think that when people talk about tax abatements, I think that it really should be those small businesses that get incentives to come to downtown. Um, they're the ones that are hit the hardest and they're the ones that need the most support. So um, I think it would just be a matter of, um, you know, rec getting the right businesses, the right, um, you know, small business companies um, to start up downtown. And I think it's also a matter of the town working with those people to make sure that they can afford to stay downtown, that they can afford, um, you know, the, the rents and the taxes and so forth. Okay, thank you. Mr. Keene? I think one of the things that I hear as I walk downtown and talk to merchants, especially over the past year, is that they believe that they've been really negatively affected by Route 279. People pass by Bennington where a year, two years ago, they would stop in Bennington. I think there are probably three things, short-term, medium-term, and long-term, that we need to do. Short-term, 
We need to get signage in New York State. We need to get signage before people come to Bennington to show them that there is a place to come. There is an historic downtown that is more than a little sign on a side road and give them reasons to come so that our businesses can begin to thrive again. Medium term, we, begin, we need to be literally branding Bennington and advertising Bennington and marketing Bennington to that much stronger area we have just an hour west of us. We're the only part of uh, Vermont that is within 45 minutes drive of 1.7 million people. We know that we get people from Albany. We know we get people from Troy. We know we get them from Saratoga Springs. We have to inundate those areas with what's going on in Bennington and bring those folks here. That's long term. We've got to go out and recruit another bunch of businesses. We have a stagnating population. Part of what we want to do in bringing people in is let them see that this is a place where they can live, work, play, where they can find a job or start a business. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bethel? Well, the thing I'd like to see done is better Bennington Corporation be totally banned. I think they've been uh, totally unsuccessful the last year and encouraged both and I down. I throw it out. I don't. Uh, town tax is collected for that organization is $70,000 a year. Uh, plus, we subsidize the housing. The old blacks get rid of that and start it. We need to find incentives for people that want to move to downtown with the business for the first year on rent control. Some kind of a, uh, a fund set up maybe with the $70,000 or whatever if somebody is to start downtown. I don't think 279 is negative for Bennington. I think it can be a plus. I'm not for them coming up because that will hurt downtown. I don't think we need that one. But what's built on 279 is here, we got to live with it, but we need to concentrate on recruiting for downtown. Uh, our community development director doesn't, in my mind, the position doesn't do enough to recruit this throughout Bennington. We need to uh, fix that, but give that job description, uh, change, make recruitment is number one priority, not number five job description list. The next select board has to be tougher, or we're all going to suffer, unfortunately. The poor people of Fusanta, a lot of it going to go out. And uh, I think we can turn it around, but we have to have strong people on the select board that are going to be convicted to doing that and make, make it part of what are we doing for the people of Bennington, not just the downtown, but all of them. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Brady? Well, as far as 279, I think it's something we're going to need in the future. Um, I agree that the, the signage could have been done better. And um, a friend and I discussed this recently with Governor Shumlin, and he is willing to work with us. As we know, um, the New York State Legislature is going to have to get involved to change the signage and stuff. And the governor said he's willing to work with uh, the governor from New York and see if uh, we could get that done. But I think it goes back to build it and they will come. Uh, we always have this downtown against Northside Drive thing. And if we build it all together, if we, if we work, you know, get the retail section down on uh, Northside Drive, get people to come in here. And I envision a, a, a mecca for Main Street, um, recording studios, more art studios, specialty shops, bakeries. You know, we, we've got <coughs> some of that going now with Old Castle moving down there, Fiddleheads, um, the, the left bank, Allegro's, you know, if we can continue on that, we can get people here to shop for the day and then go down to Main Street, see a show, have dinner. You know, it, it's got to be done in conjunction. Everything's got to be done together, not an us against them mentality. And I think it's very possible to, um, you know, a, as uh, we heard, 1.7 million people in the area. Um, we could pull a lot of those people in here and, and really benefit the town with it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Corcoran? Peter's 100% right. There <clears throat> absolutely has been an us against them mentality both between the north side drive commercial sector and the downtown. Instead of focusing on one area or another, we need to really be looking into this as a whole town picture. Um, we, there's a recruitment plan that we've worked on uh, getting in place. Uh, it sits idle right now, and it's being used a little bit, but not to the, to the full extent it should be. 
Um, I believe, as Mr. Bethel alluded to, that the uh, community development director's position should be a full-time recruitment position. Um, we have an absolute idea of where to start and what industries to go after, but specifically when you look at commercial and retail. Uh, we've seen industry trade studies. We know where we're leaking uh, business in New York State. We know where we're leaking within a 30-minute drive, a 40-minute drive, and a 60-minute drive. Uh, we have spots to start. We know what those are. We need to do it. Uh, we talk about it. Um, we, you know, have meetings and we do a lot of a lot of nice things. But the, you know, when it comes down to brass tacks, uh, we're not getting it done. And that's not the fault of one individual. Uh, I'm not putting anybody under the under the bus here. But that's the for the, that's the fault of a of a select board that's that's not uh, made it an initiative to make it happen. Um, we need to get a board that's going to get behind recruitment and bring in business to Bennington 100%. Um, and it's, until we have that, uh, we're going to just keep keep treading water. But we're starting to fall. We're starting to fall underneath. Okay, thank you. Our next question comes from Patrick McArdle with the Rutland Herald. Ms. Fields is going to take it first again. Uh, it's kind of a long one. <laughs> there are many challenges facing Vermont in the United States today, but the select board can only affect some of them. What are some of the improvements you think the select board can make for the people of the town, and what abilities or knowledge of yours do you think can help deal with those improvements? Um, well, I think that, you know, just a couple of the things that the select board definitely has power over, and I've mentioned it a couple of times, is to work on making the, the changes that we need um, with the roads and the sidewalks so that people want to come out and play. Um, that's definitely something we can do. I know that we're like, you know, it's very hard to do when you don't have enough funds. And, you know, I heard in the um, budget meeting that, you know, ideally we should be repaving 10 miles um, a year. And we're, we were doing six, six and a half. And um, this year we're only going to be doing four because of the bridge, um, the Colville Bridge that they're going to be working on. Um, so it is a challenge, but I think it's doable. I think we could, um, you know, come together. There's definitely you know, if everybody's head gets in, into the game, we can definitely figure out a way to do it. It's, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, so it's gonna take a long time, and I recognize that. Um, I think another part um, <laughs> that is really important is that, you know, the community connection. When we talk about um, dealing with the drug problems, dealing with the youth, um, not having anything to do and anywhere to go, we really need to get all of the community groups together and the board can kind of act as a liaison they've been doing that with the school boards i think it needs to keep going in that direction putting um, groups together you've got some really incredibly talented people in this town um, and i have a lot of experience you know every day as a caregiver i work as a team um, we all have to put our heads together and and figure out what needs to be done and how to do it okay thank you mr keen thank you uh I see the select board as sort of the CEO of the town. Everybody else in the town that works for the town is sort of the operations area. So I think the select board's got to set the tone. It's, I think, been mentioned here in terms of planning where the select board wants the town to go, how it's going to get there. Uh, we see, for example, that over the next couple of years as well, town plan needs to be revised or updated, rewritten. So somebody needs to envision, visualize exactly what the town is going to look like five, ten years hence. As you pointed out, nothing happens overnight. So the select board's got to be the one that sets the tone. The select board's got to be the one also that sets the performance measures in place. If we want to bring in five new businesses within a year, the select board should be reporting to the town. Well, where are we at the end of half a year? Where are we at the end of a year? What's the pipeline for getting those new businesses in? If we're going to be reinvesting in our infrastructure, when are we going to be reinvesting in that? Uh, what's the timeline? How are we doing on that? And while we're reinvesting in infrastructure, how much of that reinvestment money is coming back to us in terms of jobs, in terms of uh, increased, increased visits to our local restaurants and our increased rents in our local, in our local facilities? Uh, the other part that I think we all have to be cognizant of, and as a select board member I would want to be, we have a lot of less fortunate and vulnerable, peop vulnerable people in this town. We need to be watching out for them. We also have a, an increasing number of elderly people. 
uh, and we need to be focusing on their needs. I've worked on things like this for 25 years in not-for-profits and for-profit organizations, moving them from this place to that place to get where they want to go, and I think that's the role I can play. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bethel? Well, what board can solve all the problems of people of Bennington, but they can start with you. Um, one of the things I'd like to see done, our version of BCI, Bennington, uh, BCI is whatever it needs to be, Bennington County Industrial Corporation. Ronald Bell's version of BCI has 14 employees. They handle commercial property and industrial. Our version has one and a half, and it just handles industrial. We need, from the select board level, to get that board of guys to expand their view and do bigger and better things. They used to have an uh, incubator. We don't have that in. Rattleboro, like I said, has less population than we do, and they have uh, an agency that does commercial and industrial. They're very successful over Rattleboro. We need to start looking at that. We spend enough money on payroll in this town, for these professionals that we have, for all our people. We've got to start demanding more of We've got to get out. Our town manager is a great guy personally, but he needs to step up to the plate with his staff, up with some ideas on how to grow the grand list. We can't just have around the same circle of and expect different results. I hope the next select board, whoever gets on there, will push some of these ideas that uh, this panel has brought up and other people have. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Brady. So it was President Bill Clinton who said it's the economy, stupid. And that couldn't be more truer than for Bennington. Um, recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. We have uh, the BBC director, the economic director, who serve at the pleasure of the town manager and the select board. What we need to do is give these people some directives. We want results on what they're doing. Um, last year's forum, after the forum was over, I went home and I turned on the TV to see if Cat TV was replaying it. There was a show on the two gentlemen that are in charge of recruiting business to Bennington were doing a talk show on the meals at the senior site and how good they were. Um, I just think they need some direction. I'm not blaming anyone. I'm saying the select board needs to needs to give them direction where they want them to go. The other thing we need to, um, to focus on as a board is the drug problem in this town. Um, we need a three-prong approach, law enforcement, and also with law enforcement, we need Senator Sears' um, doctor shopping bill to be reintroduced. It was vetoed by the governor for privacy issues. I think with some changes, we could get that. It would take a lot of the, the pills off the street in Bennington. Uh, we need education. We need drug programs in the schools. Um, when these people get sentenced in these sweeps, uh, we can have them go to classes and talk to the kids. They can see what it has done to their life. And the other is treatment. Um, Bennington, sooner or later, we're going to need a rehab here. I'm working with a friend. We're writing for a grant, uh, trying to get a, a rehab in Bennington. I think it could be in conjunction with uh, the Turning Point United Counseling and uh, Southwestern Vermont Medical Center. Okay, thank you. Mr. Cork? Uh, the select board can improve Bennington in, in a lot of ways. We have some, some authority to, to make some, thing ha some things happen. Um, one thing that absolutely should happen if we want to get serious and improve in Bennington is focusing on recruiting business. Uh, I touched on it earlier. We have a plan in place. Um, we know where we can start. We need to make the community development director position a full-time recruitment uh, position and also direct the BBC to, to be uh, involved in that also. Uh, the select board, although doesn't directly fund the BBC, we do control um, the, the money from the taxing district and who it goes to. We have the authority to either decide to give it to them or give it to a group that we see could be potentially doing a, a little bit better service to, to Bennington. Um, we have the town plan coming up also. There's some things in there that should be looked at and reworked. Um, we worked a few years ago to change the zoning on Johnson Controls. Uh, we had the votes to do so at the time. Uh, it was allowed to fade, fall apart. Uh, the Planning Commission came back with an absolutely horrendous plan that, in my opinion, they knew uh, would not work. 
uh, for the point of getting that voted down. Uh, if I get to the point where I have people to get that done again, I can promise that won't happen. We won't allow that to happen again. Um, you know, we have a 15-page sign ordinance in Bennington telling us 100 different reasons of what we can't, can and can't do with signs and, you know, and all over the place. And we just work against ourselves so much to be as restrictive as we possibly can. We need to be business friendly. We need to work with businesses that, you know, that are trying to look like they're open. Um, it's not an easy climate out there. It's tough to be in business these days. And we need to be as least as restrictive as possible. And we're kind of at the other element, uh, other end of that right now. So uh, those are just a few things, uh, but immediately uh, I would like to focus on business recruitment. Um, like, as I said, there's a plan in place that's ready to go. We just need a select board to, to get it done that's willing to do it. So hopefully we can, we can have one this time around. Okay, thank you. Our last question this evening comes from Keith Whitcomb with the Bennington Banner. Mr. Keene will answer first. There has been a lot of talk and action geared towards recruiting new businesses, do you think more needs to be done to keep the ones we have? You're really talking about two things, and every, every company, every employer, and every region of the country work on the same thing. We need to recruit businesses. Yeah, we need to do that all the time. You also need to retain businesses, and part of your effort Part of your efforts got to be to understand what your current businesses are doing that's good for them, that's good for the town, where they're having problems, where they're having issues, where they need help, and find ways to help them. It's a lot easier if you focus on retaining what you have. It takes a lot less time to make that business or those businesses become more successful than the time it takes to recruit new businesses. Because when you're recruiting new businesses, you're competing against five or six other states. You're competing against a lot of other value propositions. And I think that's one of the things where we have to really be forceful. Bennington has to show that it has a value proposition for new businesses to come in. They need to want to come in. Bennington has to show that it's willing to retain businesses and do what it can, identify grants, find grant money, uh, identify courses in customer service, courses in retention, whatever we have to do to retain businesses. Retention is 90% of good business. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bethel? Well, of course, we should do everything we can to keep the businesses that we have here. We don't want to create the swinging door effect of somebody coming in and somebody going out. But without concentrating on recruiting new businesses, not ones that compete with the ones that are here, but just new businesses bring foot traffic, bring a reason to come to Pennington, you can't be successful with anything else. Going back, a couple of the other candidates said about uh, restrictions on sign, restrictions on the town plan. We've got to look at all of them now. We're in a different day. i use for an example, the Hart property just sold $250,000. The Hart property, the old uh, merchant bank and three or four stores on one side, uh, nature's clause together. It, all, it all sold collectively for $250,000. It was assessed for $750,000. Now that's a heck of a hit on our grand list. If that new owner comes back and wants his tax, his or her tax adjusted, that's a lot for downtown. We need to concentrate on recruitment, recruitment, and recruitment for downtown and Northside Drive. And like I said before, at BCI, open up, do more, just handle industrial. We need industry, but that's going to be the swing and door thing because not many industries are going to come back northeast. So I live in real work. I'll tell you right now, whether I get on that board or whether I don't, I'm going to hammer this new board, start doing more about recruitment and stop going around the same circle over and over and over again. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Brady? I think one of the best ways to uh, retain business is to grow the grand list. The grand list has been stalled for many years, and the property owners and the businesses that are here are taking on larger and larger chunks of, of keeping everything going. Um, another thing we could do to reta retain business is training our workers, having good training programs for uh, people to 
to, I know Poisson that's leaving town, one of their complaints in the past has been finding people that can do the jobs that they're asking them to do. So I think if we use the Career Development Center and um, um, offer some training to area workers who are, are misplaced or whatever, we could, we could do ourselves some good in retaining other businesses. And as far as recruiting other businesses, um, what I would suggest is we do go back to an incubator building. We had one over in North Bennington for a while, and it was, I know quite a few people that started a business in there. Uh, the, the rents were really, really decent. The overhead was low, um, and it helped a lot of, uh, I think, drill masters that, that's doing well today started in that incubator building. So if we have a place where we can um, get these people started, we wouldn't have to go out and recruit businesses. There are entrepreneurs right here in town that would love to get started. Um, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Corcoran? Retention is a tough topic because it's, it's something you can't really measure. Um, you know, but that being said, we need to be in constant contact with the businesses that we have, especially our major players find out what's working, what's not working for them, what we as a town can do to try and help them, you know, whether it be tax incentives, uh, low to no interest loans. Uh, we have some uh, some really good uh, things in our tool chest that we can use to try and to try and help retain businesses that may or may not be struggling. Um, you know, but also back to the recruitment piece, and it's a word that's getting thrown around here all the time, but, you know, foot traffic drives business for, you know, for other businesses. And if we can cr recruit um, businesses that are complementary to some some of the ones we already have, you know, in my opinion, I just I just see it snowballing into an effect where it'll help some of the ones that are currently here and help to you know in, in a way that's that's retention by driving uh, money into our economy. So of course it's important to try and to try and retain business. Um, I would just it scares me a little bit to focus so much on that because I've heard the retention piece thrown out before. Well, we don't work to recruit, we retain. And uh, to me, that's just a, uh, it's just a way to, to get out of being measured for your success or your failure. So, uh, you know, as much as I, I know we need to be doing those things, the bigger piece right now is, is to have some stuff that we can measure, and that's how successful we are at bringing new business in. Okay, thank you. Ms. Fields? So I think that, you know, we definitely need to um, put a focus on retaining businesses. I agree, we definitely need to recruit. Um, it's probably the one of the most important things we need to do. But when you're talking about retain, retaining businesses, um, as far as like you know industries go, we really need to have that close relationship with them so we can find out what their unmet needs are and work together to figure out a way, to see if we can help them. You know, if it's skills, if it's working through, you know, getting the proper training in town or um, whatever it may be. I think that there's some other things when you're talking about small businesses. Um, I have a real concern about. If you bring a whole bunch of big box stores or anchor stores into town, you're, you're creating a workforce that isn't making a livable wage. And if you don't make enough money to put food on your table, then you're not going to make enough money to buy the artisan crafts and the home, you know, the homemade specialty um, foods and um, things that are in the small businesses already downtown. So I think that we need to be cautious about that. Um, I also do um, believe that we need to finish 279 because I do believe that, you know, before it even was built, it was like, what are you doing? You're going to take all the traffic out of um, downtown Bennington, out of Bennington entirely. Um, now that it's built, people just drive right on by. So I do think that we need to put pressure on the state to finish that. Okay. Thank you. Well, this concludes the question and answer portion of tonight's candidate Forum. Each candidate will now be given two minutes to make a closing statement, and we will begin with, with Mr. Bethel. Well, thank you, WPN and Kat D, and thanks for the candidates who showed up there. I wish I could have showed up, uh, but I couldn't make it. Uh, I want to read it's important to get the next board member. One seat vacant. I support Justin Carcon to be reelected because he's done a great job. He's tried to push all of talked about tonight. But we need to put somebody on that board that's going to work with Justin and John McFadden to grow Bennington's economy. And I know I'm probably a dark horse in this race, but that's okay. 
know what you need to do. I'll remind people I pledged so that Walmart have a bigger Walmart. I helped light the monument of, uh, when people didn't want it, and a group of people got together. Monument. I want a constant control chain. I do not want 279 finished. You don't need it. Um, very frank. I want the youth, but unless you have money, you can't do anything more for the youth at the select board. You need to raise the red list of Pennington. And thank you, and good luck to everybody. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bethel. Mr. Brady? Again, I'm Peter Brady, born and raised, well, not born here, um, raised here in Bennington. Uh, I've served Bennington in many capacities. I've served as Justice of the Peace and on the Civil Board of Authority. I served as the BSD moderator and MAU moderator. I've served the, all the unions of Bennington County as Bennington County Vice President of the AFL-CIO. Uh, many of you remember I served two terms in the House of Representatives. Uh, I concentrated my time there on fighting for working families, whether fighting for higher wages, training programs, or fighting for lead poisoning prevention for our local youth, and fighting for ADA standards for locals with disabilities. Bennington is at a crossroads. In the upcoming year, we will visit and revise the town plan there are many big infrastructure problems to be done. It is vital that we start recruiting and retaining a diversified employer base of manufacturing and retail to grow our stalled grain list and job market. We may need to replace the town manager in the next few years because of retirement. Um, I'd just like to leave you with a couple quotes. This one's from former Governor Howard Dean. Peter has been a wonderful addition to the legislature. He always keeps his constituents in mind and strives to address their needs. The people of Bennington are well served by having Peter Brady as their representative. And uh, Senator Bernie Sanders, uh, it's been a real pleasure to work with you on a number of issues over the past couple of years. You le your level of commitment to issues facing work working people has been extraordinary. We need more people like you running for office and representing Vermonters. My name is Peter Brady. I ask you to give me the chance to help Bennington. Bennington's in my soul. I love Bennington. Good night and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brady. <coughs> Mr. Corcoran. Sir, uh, the voters of Bennington were gracious enough to elect me to the select board three years ago. I was very humbled by it. I uh, immediately got to work. Um, and that's what I plan to do again if, if I'm given the opportunity to serve Bennington for three more years. Uh, I'm excited about our prospects and concerned for our future. Uh, and I pledge to, to put my whole heart and my, all my effort behind everything I do for this town. Um, you know, so I thank you. I ask for your vote, and I appreciate you turning in for this evening. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Corcoran. Ms. Fields? So I think that, um, you know, I know a lot of um, the people in Bennington are really struggling right now. Um, I know that I think it's like over 60% of our kids qualify for uh, free meals or reduced meals. Um, and I know what it's like to be a struggling Bennington person. So I've dedicated my entire life to helping others and um, fighting for uh, working people and those that are vulnerable. So th that's something that I hope to do on the Bennington Select Board if you vote for me. And I promise you I won't give up and I'm ready to roll my sleeves up and get to work. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Ms. Fields. Mr. Keene. Thank you. This has been very positive and very enjoyable. It's been fun. Well, I'm Michael Keene, a former teacher, a person with 25 years global experience helping companies and helping organizations to reach their goals, to improve their performance. And I think that's really what Bennington is about. We need to be business friendly. We need to be actively recruiting and retaining business I'm keen on Bennington. I'm passionate about this place. It has so much potential. Shame on us if we don't realize it. And I think we can realize it with the right approaches. Uh, as a member of the select board, my background, my skills and experience, I think fit that position like a glove. I would ask for your vote. Please vote for me. I promise if you do, I'll not only love you forever, but I will work very hard for you every day. Okay, thank you, Mr. Keene. That will wrap it up for this special edition of News and Views. 
On behalf of WBTN, I want to thank our candidates not only for being here with us this evening, but for putting themselves out there, for being willing to run for office and hold office. It is uh, difficult, thankless work, and they are all to be commended for their commitment to the community. I want to thank CAT TV for their collaboration in bringing this forum to the public. Thank the Bennington Banner, the Penny Saber, and the Rutland Herald for supplying us with our questions this evening. I want to thank our producer, Tracy Barrett, for putting this whole thing together, including the interviews we did on WBTN. And thank uh, Aaron Sawyer back at BTN with his uh, finger on the buttons. On election day, vote for the candidates of your choice, but vote. Good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow. Thank you, Robert, for doing what you're doing. You're welcome.